All right. Once again, I'm Mike Dalbo. I'm the GIS coordinator for the Minnesota Department of Education. I'm a Minnesota IT services employee, so we provide uh, IT work for the entire executive branch of the state of Minnesota. And uh, you are in the Charles Frost room. And uh, if you're here to see Python scripting to create over 300 accessible maps in just a few hours, this presentation is only 15 minutes long. But you're in the right spot. So, uh, and I've lived in Minnesota for about 20 years, and I did know all the answers to all the trivia questions yesterday. And with any luck, my slides will auto advance. So, thanks for coming. Thanks, welcome to Minnesota. And uh, you might ask yourself, do you need an agenda slide for a 15 minute talk? And the answer is no, you don't. But I'll take this opportunity to say that I have witnesses that said I tried desperately to get the auto captions to work in PowerPoint, and they did not work. So you're stuck with me speaking clearly, and hopefully when this ends up on the tubes of views later, it will have captions in it. But we're gonna talk about why you should care about accessibility. Hopefully that should be pretty obvious by this point. Why would we wanna make maps in Microsoft Word, right? And, and this is your last chance to run screaming out the back if you're like, I'm not interested. Just make sure you come back for Joanna and, and Lucy's talk in, in 20 minutes. But, and we're gonna talk about alt tagging and all kinds of batch stuff. So. Why should you care? A mentor of mine always said, start with why. Why, why do you care about this? Uh, if you work for the government like me, or even a nonprofit, or even private sector, the information you put on a map is important to every citizen, right? And they might not be able to physically consume that with their eyeballs, right? They might be blind or low vision. So it's not just about checking for color blindness, right? It's presenting that information in an alternative format and hopefully summing it up quickly with an alt tag of the map itself, right? Saying, at least saying, this is a map, so someone who's completely blind knows to skip it, and, and that's not what they're gonna consume. If you're making tactile maps, like this tater tot hot dish map on, on the right, God bless you, you are doing God's work, and that is really cool, but that's not what this is about. This is about our typical, like, static PDF map that someone consumes on their computer, and if they're blind or low vision, they're using a screen reader. Right? Hopefully I'm preaching to the choir to you now, but if not, I'll just drive this home. This is very important. We want to make sure every person can have access to, in some way to the information we're conveying on a map, not just those that can see. So we're gonna talk about what doesn't work well. Right Now my communications group told me not to use the word suck so I, I will tell you that our traditional desktop tools like ArcGIS Pro, they are crappy <laughs> of epic proportions. And, and when you create a PDF with, with, with ArcGIS Pro, you get basically an empty file accessibility-wise, right? Your traditional tag tagging methods in Adobe in Acrobat produce empty tags. So you're stuck with a gigantic manual process to tag that. Now that's talking about Pro version 2.6, which I'm stuck on for my own enterprise IT reasons. I saw some improvements, some serious improvements in 2.8, and I'm hopeful for 3, 3.0 and beyond, but I still see manual work at the end of it. It's, I still see PDFs that are not accessible when you run the accessibility checker. And, and that's a problem, and I, I hope that they'll get there one day. And I'm not just gonna bust on Esri either, the same thing happens in, in QGIS or QGIS or Q or Quantum, whatever you want to call it, right? It's not just an Esri problem, it's a traditional desktop GIS problem, right? With QGIS, on, on the left there, that image, if you could see it, that's a, a scan of a default PDF coming out of QGIS at 310. It's a lot of red X's, there's a lot of problems there, right? I, I'm on version 3.2.2 now, and it, it looks a little bit better, but again, still some work needs to be done. I have some problems with ligatures, the, the Calibri font is like the default font for the state of Minnesota, and anything that has two L's or two T's is unreadable in the PDF when you export it to PDF. So that throws that font out the window. Do you know how many school districts have double T's in the names? <laughs> you know how many times I have to say attendance? So that's a problem, right? Now what's so bad about doing a couple of manual steps, right? Well, if you're doing one map, no big deal. I have over 300 school districts in the state of Minnesota. And, and my goal is to try to map and update those school district maps every year. 
So 300 maps, not cool. So what works better, believe it or not? Microsoft Word <laughs> works better. Okay, think about it, right? If you've got a heading in Word and you convert that to PDF, the PDF knows it's a heading. If you've got an alt image, an alt text on your image in Word and you convert that to PDF, the PDF recognizes and reads the alternative text. Same thing for lists, same thing for hyperlinks, right? So if you can do layout planning of your map in Word, which I know is unusual and completely foreign to us, but if you can do that, and it's, it's not impossible, if you can do that, you can use this method to script out as many maps in Word as you want. And then you can batch convert those to PDF, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later, right? So the, one of the key things you need is a Python library, right, for creating the docx files or the Word files, right? This, this library, Python docx, is for creating and updating Word docs. It's got an open source license. 11 contributors, the documentation isn't the greatest, you know, it's, it's still kind of beta, but it works, right? Unfortunately, it doesn't do alt tagging by default, right? So it does not have in it the capability to tag images with alt text. But if you're familiar with Git, GitHub, and cloning, and pull requests, there's a standing pull request that adds that functionality to that library. So I just clone this repo, on my desktop, incorporating that pull request, and boom, I have the ability to do alt text on my images through a Python library. Now, of course, with me, I couldn't leave well enough alone, right? That's, that's not enough just by itself, right? I need to get a little bit more creative with what I wanted to do. Nerd mode activated. So I had several modifications. Uh, you know, I started with some code that a friend of mine uh, created. I wanted things like floating images, right, because they gave me more layout flexibility. I wanted to do both portrait and landscape, so I had to set that up. And an important part for accessibility and usability, I needed lists of every school program in that school district to be added to the end of that PDF. So that, again, folks that are blind or using screen readers for other reasons, you name it, could have an alternative way to consume the main pieces of information in that PDF. So those are some things that I had to do, but I wanna make it clear that I'm a hacker, right? I am not a pure coder by heart. I had to hack a lot of this, and I just hacked stuff until it works. That's my MO, right? So I'm gonna show you some jumbly code samples. I'm not gonna be going to depth with these because it's been a long time since I touched them, but my point is, is that I worked with some code, and I did some changes, and I was able to make it work. This is about just a few key sections out of about 100 lines of code I did to set up that floating picture function, right? And if, so if you don't care about that, if you don't want that, you wouldn't need to do this part. But basically, it's just you know, defining a function to say, hey, when I add this picture, I want to add it as a float, right? As I mentioned, I wanted to do both portrait and landscape, so I had to set out layout parameters in, in a set of code, right? On the left-hand side, you see basically the pieces that are for portrait, and on the right-hand side, you see the pieces that are for landscape. So I have basically the page, width, and height. You can see I'm basically making 11 by 17 maps here, right? Where I'm putting the legend, you know, was slightly different for portrait and layout. Same for the logo. And it's, it's straight up Python. It's, it's pretty standard, straightforward stuff. So, you know, I can't remember the, the main script. I think it was maybe 300 lines of code, but it's a lot of just copying and pasting of like, if this, then that kind of stuff. So, and then again, as I mentioned, 300 school districts, right? I had to set up, I used QGIS Atlas to dump out PNG files of these school districts that were the key map component. And you can see at the top, I'm just adding that as a floating picture. The path is to a PNG file called SD underscore something, the identifier for that PNG file. And then just placing it in the document and adding the legend and the logo. So it's a lot of just sort of setting up the data hacking through the Python until it works. Now, I've lived in Minnesota for about 20 years and it took me about 10 years to realize that when I'm using the snowblower, I'm not doing that to get out of shoveling, right? I, I'm doing that to make the shoveling easier. And, and sometimes, sometimes it makes a mess, like, like what you see there with, <laughs> what I did to my mailbox, right? So the point is, is that code, like your snowblower, gets you through some of the hard 
sort of mundane, repetitive parts. You still have some work left to do. And, and that was the case here, right? So I end up, after running this code with a bunch of Word documents, I've got to batch convert those to PDF, of course. And that requires Adobe Acrobat Pro. I could only run about 80 on this little laptop before it would crash. Luckily, those 80 would be done, and I'd just move to the next set. Um, and then you have to have this sort of action in that conversion process that says, you know, set your open options of that PDF to display the document title. I mean, Word knows what the document title is. I set that in the code. Adobe doesn't until you explicitly tell it that so that when you run through the accessibility checker, that's kind of the last thing. One of the th key things that the accessibility checker checks for is like, does this document have a title? I had to do that in Adobe to make sure that every one of those documents had a title that was recognized by the accessibility checker. Small thing, still part of the batch process, right? So I, even though I'm still doing some manual work, it's still all batch. So I still do not have to touch every single one of these PDFs. And I can tell you that at the end, you can go download them yourself. At the end, I end up with a PDF where the accessibility checker passes on all fronts. The only two pieces that are left as question marks are things that you would have to manually check, and that's on me. If I didn't do a good job with logical reading order or color contrast, that's, that's on me. So we're gonna look a little bit at the maps before we wrap up, um, and then we'll have time for questions. But on the right, you can just kind of see a, a pretty simple school district map. Uh, it's a rural one, so there's not a lot going on there. Um, but basically, some typical map surrounds local legend. Here's a deeper look. This is Northfield, uh, about 45 minutes south of here. Um, this kind of demonstrates the challenge of these maps. Like, who are they for, right? Uh, are these for the school districts who care about these really complicated boundaries? And this is actually a simple one. But they care about, you know, how far out do they have to send the buses? Or are these for the general public? who care about like, well, what schools are in that district? Right now they're for both, but my point is, is that by doing this automatically in a batch, I can now start having the conversation of, I can make two versions. I can make a version that's gigantic, 36 by 48. If I could get Word to figure that out, and I think I can, I can make a gigantic one so they could see these complicated boundaries and wh where those roads are. And I can make little squished eight by tens for the public, especially when, in districts like this where all the facilities are clustered in one area, I could do that. I could make three versions. Point is, is that this scripting, this batch process opens up so many possibilities for me that now my pipeline is my poor guy who has to load these into the, into the web content manager. Um, here's an example of a problem like if you have a cognitive you know, issue with, with visually, these labels, there's, there's too much going on here. These, some of these maps are incredibly complex and there's way too much going on. You know, the labels of the facilities are kind of interrupting the labels on the base map, which is a whole other deal I have to work on. But my point is here is that's that list of school pro programs on the right that gets appended to each one of these PDFs. So somebody, even if somebody's not using a, a screen reader, they can see like even more information that pertains to this district than actually appears on the map. And they can, so it's not just an accessibility improvement or an accessibility requirement, it's a usability upgrade as well. So, and again, scripting this, batching this means that, you know, if that list of facilities updates, and, and to be frank, it does update pretty much every year, more frequently than the boundaries do, I can do that with these maps. I can push these out, I've got them. And this is the last one I'll show you, just a very simple rural district where like, you know, three schools, big deal, right? But you can see some of those complicated boundaries in the south there. And again, these are some of the easier ones. Um, but it is what it is. So some resources here. I'll, um, I'll come back to this page in just a minute, so if you wanna take a picture of it or whatever. Um, but I have a, a repo out there that sort of demonstrates the accessibility problems with PDFs out of Pro and QGIS. Um, if I ever get to a higher version of Pro, I'll, I'll update that. Um, Minutes Map Accessibility page, which Amy talked about yesterday. That's really great resources. That's where you can get sort of the base code that I started from. Um, links to that Python library for docx creation and the, the pull request, the open pull request for that. And at the bottom, you can download these maps that I've been showing you. They're, they're much nicer when you download them and, and look at them on, on a screen, or, or I hope they look decent printed out, too. Um, before I wrap up, I have some credits. Uh, Brad, with the Secretary of State's office, he was here yesterday. Um, he was the first one in my circle that had this idea of using that, that Python library to use Word documents, and Ruth helped him package up that code. So if you download it, those two are kind of the key people to thank. And my colleagues, Kim and, and Becky, 
all folks here work for the state of Minnesota. Kim and Becky helped me immensely with checking my PDF files to make sure, yes, they did do what you want them to do. The logical reading order is working and you've got things at the right spot on the tag tree and stuff like that. So um, like a lot of our efforts, we stand on the giants of shoulders, right? So, and my time is up. Thank you, Hannah. Um, I will leave this up here. You can contact me. There's my email address and you can harass me on Twitter if you want. And hopefully we have a few minutes for questions. And yes, we do, five minutes for questions. So I'll go back to that resources page. Any questions? Go ahead, Joanna. So the question is, is there a similar Python library to do this in PowerPoint? And, and the answer is, I don't know. I don't know. I'm thinking there might be because, you know, these are all XML documents ultimately. And so, you know, if you know how to manipulate them, you can. But I can tell you that I was surprised to learn that I could make words dimensions be pretty much whatever I wanted them to. You know, your typical out of the box is letter, you know, legal, stuff like that. But I could do you know, 32 by 20 if I really wanted to with this. So um, so there may be such a library, but I would say try it. See, see, try it in Word and see if, see if you can get what you really want. And I think, can you convert a PowerPoint slide to Word if you like your layout? I think you might be able to, so I'm not sure about that. Any other questions? Okay, if you're standing up in the back, now's your chance to come find a seat. <laughs> if you want one. Thank you, everyone.